So what's your superpower? It's a question used as a conversation starter, or one they surprise you with at a job interview. It's a good thing I don't have any interviews planned because my superpower's pretty weird. I can kill things with my pee. This summer I discovered that my urine eliminates anthills. Do you really need to ask? How'd you think I discovered it? Now, out in the country where nobody's watching, this kind of lawn care is pretty simple. Back in the city, though, it requires a certain degree of stealth. But the thing is, it works. Better than the ant killer you get at the store. And it makes the lawn grow like crazy. It's been this way since I got out of the hospital. It must have something to do with the medication I'm on. So today, I want to take a look at my medication list, what it all is, and why they make us take this stuff. I guess I was lucky. I managed to get through the first half of my life without having to take any prescription medications at all. And when I received the LVAD, it was quite a shock because the first thing they do is give you this laundry list of medications and pills and things, and uh, I really had no idea how any of this works. Today I'm with my friend Sandy Ma. Hi. Hi, Sandy. Hi. Sandy is a pharmacist, Hi. and uh, she's going to help me make some sense of this. Um, it's taken me a while to figure this stuff out and uh, I think there's still probably a few things I could learn. So uh, we're just going to go through my medication list and, um, and talk about what I've got here and what all this stuff does. Okay. Let's now I guess, first of all, one of the things I learned was um, this, it, it almost seems like they deliberately make it complicated because First of all, these things have more than one name. That's correct. So there's a generic name and then there's a brand name. So okay. Most people will refer to medications by their uh, brand name, but then they don't realize there's a generic name. So. Okay. So you, if, if you're going to talk about these, you kind of have to, you know, it'd be best to know two names for It for would each, be easier, yeah, so that okay. you can understand, you know, what medication and you don't accidentally you know, overdo it, overdose by taking two okay. of the same, so, yeah. So, um, I guess we might as well, uh, might as well start with, with some in. of the stuff yeah. I've got here, and uh, you can tell me what all of this does. Okay. This is, I, I recognize this, this is Warfarin. Right. And uh, I know this from the hardware store where they make it into rat poison. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a beneficial medication for those that need it. <laughs> yes, so. I, I had that conversation with a doctor when I, I expressed concerns that they were trying to poison me. Right. He says, well, the only reason for that is because they're overdosing the rats. Mm -hmm. If the rats had a heart problem, this would be beneficial. And this is an anticoagulant. That's correct. So that means that it's going to help prevent blood from clotting. Okay. So, and I need that because I have mechanical parts correct. in my body that yeah. uh, that would would promote clotting or, or basically it's at risk for clotting. At risk so for clotting. So you okay. definitely don't want any clots uh, in your case because of the function would be um, a, a bad situation. So. Okay. Now this stuff's kind of complicated. I, I think we could probably do a whole episode on this. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I learned is that, that clotting is measured by a parameter called PT or INR. Correct. So PT is prothrombin time. 
Uh, that's just the time that it takes to, for your blood to clot. And it's measured by the INR, which is the international ratio, uh, normalized uh, ratio. Okay. So, yeah, so you want to okay. be within certain levels there. Yeah, and uh, I've learned that a normal person has an INR around around one, give or take, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, mm -hmm. you know, one, one point one, and uh, they've told me they want me in a therapeutic range. That was a new term too, mm -hmm. of two to three. Right. So they're always tinkering with the dose of this stuff to uh, to keep me in that range. Right. And um, it's kind of weird stuff to dose, I guess, because uh, the first thing I noticed was uh, if you're a diabetic, you're often you know dosing your own medication. But uh, mm -hmm. this stuff, they they want to run the show because yeah. I guess it's you know there's there's more lead time between between a change you'd make and. And, and, and the effect? Yeah, so a lot of times if you are dietary uh, input will affect your warfarin, the medications, other medications can affect that as well too. Mm -hmm. So therapeutic range needs to be maintained and that usually is done by having it checked uh, through your blood work. So okay, yeah, we, do, we as VAD patients do a lot yeah. of blood work. They're always watching mm -hmm. the uh, the INR. Um, I've been lucky. They've given me a uh, what they call a, a POC device. Mm -hmm. I understand that stands for point of care, a lot right. of acronyms. Yeah. And uh, that's helped me uh, be able to check my INR myself. Right. So you have um, an at home device that yeah. can check your own blood work yeah. or test INR. Yeah. They still want to make the decision on it, mm -hmm. but uh, this helps me because. Um, there are dietary concerns too. Right, it's a gauge so that you can yeah. go by. So yeah, I've heard that you can drastically lower your INR either intentionally or accidentally exactly. by eating a lot of salad. What's that right. about? Well, in the salad, there's uh, vitamin K, which is uh, going to affect your warfarin levels, the INR levels, and so that's where you need to be consistent with your uh, diet. If it's like salads, then for example, in the summer, we tend to have more fresh salads. So we try to tell people not to go drastic with their salads. And if they do, they might need to adjust their warfarin dose. Okay. But again, so it's not really about vo avoiding these foods. Correct. It's, it's about yeah, being consistent. Yeah, and being aware. If you aware. like salads, they'll dose you for it, and you'll, you'll be yeah. perfectly fine, yeah. and you have the benefits of the salad exactly. too, right? And like when we mentioned okay. dietary, we also have to watch uh, sometimes if you're cooking with a lot of garlic. Garlic seems to be a, a big, um, can cause uh, INR levels to change mm. as well too. And medications like herbal supplements like ginseng, uh, ginkgo biloba, that can be another uh, problem with the uh, INR and sometimes omegas as well too in high, high doses will cause okay. that. That's well. the fish oil stuff, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. They've got yeah. me on that. We'll, yeah. We'll yeah. get to that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. So um, any other uh, side effects from, well, from warfarin, as aside from uh, killing you if you're a mouse? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, since it does cause your blood to thin, um, we now are at risk for, you might uh, have an upset stomach, so that can be an issue, but the main uh, a uh, problem that you would notice is like if you notice more bruising, um, yeah. and it doesn't take do much. Bruises. Yeah, and if you cut yourself, you might have a harder time to stop the bleeding because again, it's an anticoagulant, so it's not going to let your blood uh, clot like a normal yeah. person. So, so it's good to be a little bit more careful. Around yeah. So things. in your case, if you're shaving, just be more mindful of when you're shaving, so you don't accidentally nick yourself. Um, you know wearing slippers around the house is another thing so that you don't accidentally jam your toe and and yeah if you do sports you know just be more okay. mindful yeah okay so that helps. um and um the other thing they had mentioned was to watch for gi bleeds yes so if you now are how do, how having do, do that well if you are having uh vomiting issues and uh upset stomach, then kind of watch to see that you're not throwing up um, a coffee ground-like substance there because that okay. tends to show. So that's what blood looks like Yeah, when it, it looks comes up. Okay. Yeah, like a coffee ground. So just be more aware of that. And so, okay. yeah, the bruising is another indication, the main one that you might want to say, okay, well, let's see why I'm bruising so much and then do your blood work. So Okay. 
Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Um, what else have they got me taking here? Um, yes, I know this one. This is ASA. That's, um, that's aspirin. Right. Um, that seems pretty straightforward. Um, it's got another word here, uh, enteric coated. Right. So what, how is that different from regular aspirin? Enteric coated is a coating on the aspirin, so it helps protect your stomach. Okay. Because aspirin, again, is one of the medications that can be hard on the stomach. So okay. if you have a sensitive stomach and if you are taking other medications that might bother the stomach, then you want to take an enteric coated to help. Even though it's enteric coated, you should still take it with some food just to help that much uh, more protection against okay. uh, uh, ulceration and GI bleeding. So Okay. Yeah. So this... I'm not taking this because I'm expected to just have a permanent headache. Right. Um, this is, what are, what, what are we doing with this med? In your case, you're taking it in conjunction with the warfarin to help. It's considered an antiplatelet, so okay. our red blood cells don't stick together. So it, perf it creates a nice flow of the blood. Okay. okay. So, so it's, it's different from the warfarin in what it does, but it kind of accomplishes the same thing, it preventing helps a to, pump clot, basically. Yeah, because you want to have your blood flowing nicely. The anticoagulant, which is a warfarin, will prevent it from coagulating. Any side effects we need to know about that one? Well, aspirin, again, can be hard on the stomach, so you have to make sure you watch for any uh, upset stomach. Uh, you may want to take with food as well, too. Uh, if you are taking exce excessive doses, sometimes you might notice a side effect like ringing in the ears as well too, mm. so I don't know um, what your dose is here. It seems I'm to be... I'm taking 324 milligrams a okay. day, so four of those 81s. So that's equivalent to a regular That's a regular aspirin, aspirin, right? Yeah. yeah, so that's, you know, within reason there. Okay. So, but yeah, the heart the What causes the, the, uh, the ears ringing? It's a side effect so it's called tinnitus of okay. that. So, okay. Yeah, but that's so that's not actually a, a brain bleed or something no, like that. No, that's no, that, that's just a, a side effect that they've noticed a, for some. It's not as serious as yeah as yeah. something like that because they they warn you about every every GI bleeds, brain yeah. bleeds. You know, yeah. And we I wear mean, a lot of helmets because of these these two meds too. Right. You know, if we're doing sports. Yeah, right? and I mean, when our discussion here, it's just. There's a lot of other side effects that it, you might come across, but the more common one is likely what we'll discuss as well, too. So, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. So, this, continuing with the A's, mm -hmm. Astro... <laughs> what makes this stuff go? This is uh, Atorvastatin. Atorvastatin. And brand name is okay. Lipitor. Okay. Uh, that, I've heard of that. That's, yeah. that's the cholesterol med, right? Correct. So that's in the class of statins. And so okay. there's many types of statins. Uh, you are on one of the statins that will help lower the bad cholesterol, which is uh, LDL. So okay. that, um, at, along with dietary, for people that have high cholesterol, they will likely need a, a, a statin based on your blood levels that get taken as well. Okay. And heart patients will basically be on it as a secondary prevention okay. because they're at risk. So you would mentioned this is a statin. It, it, I, that's the other thing I learned. These medications are, are grouped into families of mm -hmm. meds that kind of do the same thing, but they're, they're different pills. Right. You know, and uh, I see a lot of these end in the same name like, mm -hmm. like for example this this is a tour of a statin mm -hmm. the, you, and you're referring to statins as a family correct yeah so what what other kind of meds would we run into there, that are statins yeah there's a handful uh, the other ones are uh, resuvastatin brand name would be Crestor there's uh, simvastatin brand name would be Zocor uh, there's pravastatin brand name would be Pravacol so those are just a, a few of them in that okay. same class of medications. Why, so did the, what, why do they have several things that do the same job? There, some people respond differently to medications, and so uh, they have 
a, a chance to try one statin, and if it doesn't work, then you have another option to try okay. another one too. So, so if you had a weird side effect or something, they might be able to work around it by yeah. trying a different. Yeah, it might okay. be lesser of a side effect if you change a statin. So okay, that's okay. been seen as well. Okay. So, so what yeah. kind of side effects do you run into Most with this stuff? Most people will have some muscle aches with the statin when they start it. Some doctors will say, well, just kind of take it for a few more weeks or months to see if that eases. But it definitely, okay. if it gets any worse, you want to you know, address that. And the doctor will probably change it. Uh, you will always have blood work as well, too, drawn to make sure you're within the therapeutic levels of the statin as well. Okay. Uh, you do want to um, you you want to make sure you don't have any of the rare side effects, which is one big one is again on the muscle there, and it's called rhabdomyolysis or losis. Uh, that is going to be a destruction of your muscles there. So that's something that you oh, don't want to that sounds uh, bad. leave. Yeah, it's rare, but okay. again, it has happened, so it's just being aware that that can okay. be. So that's why if you have a sign of muscle achiness, again, talk to your pharmacist, talk to your doctor, and then make sure that it's nothing more severe. Okay. Uh, because it works in our liver, that's what helps decrease the amount of uh, cholesterol production. We want to make sure the liver is functioning well. Again, yes, they, they seem, work. all of a yeah. sudden, they seem very interested yes. in my liver. I guess yeah. that's... You That's wanna, all part of being on a statin. Right. You want to make okay. sure your liver's, is, the enzymes are within range that it's metabolizing the medication. One indication that may happen is if you have jaundice. And so, again, that would be yellowing of your face, your, you know, your skin, uh, your eyes. And so you want to address that as well, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. It doesn't affect your onions. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else we got? <laughs> Carvedilol. This is, these are alols. Right. So, okay. what's this stuff? That is in the class of beta blockers. So, that's going to help uh, regulate your heart rate, heartbeat. Okay. So, that is also used as a blood pressure lowering medication as well, too. So, okay. So again, in that class of medications, there's a handful that sound the same. The ending mm -hmm. sounds the same as okay. well, too. So those would be like metoprolol. Lopressor is a brand name. Uh, there is bisoprolol, which okay. is monocor, and labetalol, trandate. So they all will have similar side effects as well, too. So Okay. Yeah. And so being that it causes the blood pressure lowering, you'll have some dizziness, you can have some lightheadedness, so always be getting up, uh, be careful when you're getting up from a sitting position, lying down position there, so that will, uh, because of the hypotension in your posture, posture. so. Okay. Yeah. yeah they, they tend to warn you a lot about, um, about standing up quickly on a van right. anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then... I guess the meds don't help that. Exactly. Okay. And then a uh, problem if you're noticing any cough or bronchospasm, again, if you were an asthmatic, then the doctor might select one beta blocker that's better than the other as well, too. So... Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, mm -hmm. We also have... These, these are pretty. <laughs> They're... Um, <laughs> Remipril. Right. That's, uh, they told me this is for, uh, for blood pressure. Correct. So that what is... What are these? What's the family? That is the ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors. So that would stand an for angiotensin converting enzyme. Sorry, so in I our asked. body... <laughs> yeah, that's another mouthful. <laughs> the, in our body, we have uh, chemicals. Or it's a pathway that you want to... Uh, in this case, it's an inhibitor. So it helps prevent um, a cascade of events. So it helps to lower your blood pressure. Okay. So, yeah. And again, in that class, there's a handful of medications. Again, similar actions. Mm -hmm. uh, one would be perindopril, which is Coversil. Uh, the other one would be lisinopril, which is Zestril, uh, and Alipril, which is Vasotec. Okay. So 
again, with blood pressure medications, you just have to be aware that it getting up from a sitting position, standing up position to be careful. And if you have so pretty it, much everything makes you fall exactly. down. Exactly. <laughs> so I know it sounds like it's, uh, you know, you just got to be very careful. You do. You do. And, and yeah. with the blood thinners, I mean, you really got to watch, yeah. watch your noggin because, yeah. uh, you know, the first, first little while uh, dealing with all of this, you, you, you forget and you stand up yeah. and you just, ooh. Yeah. Sit down quickly, everything recovers, yeah. try it slower, and, yeah. and, and it's okay again. So it's, it becomes your new normal, because yeah. you have to be more aware yeah. of Honestly, what, I don't even notice it now, yeah. because it's just, yeah. you, you just don't try that. Yeah, some of, I mean, some of the other side effects people have noticed from that, too, is uh, a cough that they can get. It can be annoying, a dry cough. Okay. So people don't think of it being related to the medication because often it won't be right away. Mm. So it won't affect your how it works on your blood pressure. It, and many times it actually does a really good job, but there's that annoying cough that someone might say, I've had enough of this cough and you know it's not a cold, it's you know something else. And then they'll realize, you know, they may need to change that medication, okay. and that usually helps. So, that's yeah. a good one to keep in mind. In yeah, case, yeah. So. In case your practitioners don't happen to catch that one. Yeah, I mean that's something that with being on a cocktail of medications, it's really you have to kind of narrow it down some of the side effects. But that one seems to be more prevalent with the ACE inhibitors, the cough. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. This one. This is hmm. sildenafil, and uh, that goes, I know that one, I, I know that goes by the trade name Viagra. Right. And that, uh, that's usually used for something different. Right. Um, so why? 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 <laughs> <laughs> so with this particular what's, class... What's it do for me? <laughs> in your case, it will help for pulmonary hypotension, hypertension. Okay. So it acts on the smooth muscle. So yes, it's Viagra, and it is used for erectile dysfunction. However, uh, it, with this medication, the it helps to lower the blood pressure or the pulmonary pressure as it acts on the smooth muscle. Okay. So it increases the blood flow, and then that way it helps to reduce that. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 really just another heart medication. Yeah, again, with discovery of medication, sometimes a side effect can be uh, discovered that it's actually a benefit for another problem. So Yes, yes, yeah. and, and that was my understanding of this stuff. It, yeah. it was originally developed as, as a, a heart medication, and then they discovered that, uh, that it gives you boners. So. Yeah, it took off from there. So <laughs> basically, if you can take any med and grow hair with it, or mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. or give you an erection, you're, you're basically, uh, you've got a lot more marketable medication, I yeah. guess. So it's one of these off-label uses that you're using it for. Yeah. So yeah. this is an, an expensive heart med. And it is. It's um, it's probably for that reason. Yeah. So that one there will come with some side effects. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed any headache or flushing of the face. Um, any problems with nasal congestion as well too. That can be an issue. Okay. And again. Um, for some people, if they're on certain medications, it can interact with that. And, yeah, I, I remember yeah. from first aid that there's there are some incompatibilities with other heart medications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and uh, I don't think you have to worry about it too much when it's it's your VAD team figuring this all exactly. out. Exactly, and that's and the they'll key. do things that that would normally show up as a no no mm -hmm. because because they know what they're doing with yeah. it. But uh, yeah. I, I remember. I remember from first aid that it, it had some incompatibilities mm -hmm. with yeah. other heart meds. Yeah, and that's key. Always discuss your medications with your team, you know, first and foremost before yeah. making any big decisions there. So, so is that uh, part of a family as well? Uh, yeah, other ones in that uh, family is you may have heard of it is the Cialis, which is a brand name, and that's Tadalafil. Uh, there's also Levitra, the brand name, and that's Vardenafil. So. Again, okay. sometimes people will be given a prescription because they gravitate to more well-known name. 
Okay. In your case, it's uh, specifically this particular one okay. for your reasons. Okay. Yeah. And I remember that being a PDE inhibitor. Do you remember yeah. what that it's, is? Uh, well, that actually is PDE-5. Uh, so it's specific oh. to that class. Okay. So that is phosphodiesterase inhibitor. So okay. that promotes the blood vessel dilation and smooth muscle relaxation. So okay. and then in turn it works. You know, on I'd your love heart. to do a show where we, we actually get into what the, these things do and the, the, the mechanism, mechanism yeah. through which they work. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean the names, you know, the, the these the, the, the names of these families just, just big questions yeah and uh, we could spend a lot more time than we yeah have on that. sometimes it's, we should do that know, a lot <laughs> so so um, the next one I've got here is spironolactone right so okay that's spironolactone. A, that's a water pill they told right. me right the brand name for that is aldactone so okay. that this particular water pill is what we call a potassium sparing which means that when we use a diuretic, we get rid of excess sodium and potassium. Okay. Uh, in your case, this particular one doesn't, uh, you want to maintain your potassium levels and not excrete excess yes. amounts. Yes, because when I, I was first discharged from the hospital, they had me on a second diuretic, um, Lasix. Right. Yeah. And uh, that one was not potassium sparing correct so they had me on potassium supplements for that right and yeah. uh, I understand that's a that's a much stronger that diuretic. one yes that one works directly in our kidneys there so that's okay. going to excrete anything that goes through the kidneys by uh, getting uh, your sodium and your potassium excretion okay Anything else we should know about yeah, these? Yeah, so with these ones here, because it is a water pill, it's meant to do uh, make you go to the bathroom. So yeah. you want to make sure you take it in the morning. Uh, Pro these, tip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't you know, take this when you're trying to sleep. <laughs> exactly. Just kind of leave yourself a couple of hours so that uh, you you don't have to be waking up in the middle of the night or just being aware of that. That just okay. helps. Yeah. So again, it can cause our blood pressure to lower a bit as well too. So being mindful of getting up slowly again and you know not too drastic moves there. Uh, you might uh, also want to um, just be aware sometimes some diuretics will cause sun sensitivities as well oh, too. Okay. So um, a few of the other diuretics, they're not potassium sparing. What would that sparing. manifest as? It would it be like sunburn or just yeah. a rash? Or? It could be rash, it could okay. be sunburn. So I mean as it is we're supposed to be wearing sunscreen as yeah. it is. So. Yeah. But uh, if you're not one to wear sunscreen and you wonder why you, you're all of a sudden you're in the sun for less time than you are normally and you have this sunburn or sun rash, then mm -hmm. you might want to look at, oh, okay. that might be the reason. So, Makes yeah. Makes sense. Yes. So, um, yeah, that's, we can go right to uh, this stuff, which um, this is a nutritional supplement. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is something that you um, you need uh, need sun to produce. Right. So that's <laughs> the yeah irony of it. You need sun to produce that. So and we try to stay out of the sun. Right. Yeah. So uh, we as uh, we as uh, as humans are, are probably don't have a lot of sources of vitamin D. Right. In uh, in our diets and and in our lives yeah especially if you uh, live in a place that's dark most of the winter correct so again we do rely on that sunshine that's why this is called the sunshine um, vitamin there's sunshine so, yeah. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> so you are taking a thousand international units yeah. so that's within range um, you, again, blood work uh, your doctor has ordered will probably monitor what levels that you are at. Okay. Uh, again, it, I've seen doses as high as uh, 2,000 international units to 5,000 international units there. Okay. It does take a lot of uh, 
in this case, because it is fat soluble, it can uh, it can accumulate. Or, that, yeah, right? it can not... accumulate, but not as severe as some of the other okay. fat soluble vitamins. In this case, there is a range that before you actually reach that toxicity. So there's not a lot of reasons not to be taking this. There's, there's... Uh, for everyone, um, again, it's it's used for many reasons. Uh, the main ones that, uh, off the top of my head, is like for bone building and maintaining your bone structure. Okay. Now, we'll continue along with some supplements okay. here. These are nutritional supplements rather than uh, <clears throat> rather than prescription medications. This stuff's mm -hmm. over the counter. This is fish oil. This is right. these are neat looking things. Yeah. Get that out of the way. Um, yeah. So this is uh, omega three, mm -hmm. um, EPA and DHA. Um, everybody says fish oil is good for you, but right. uh, you know, so tell me about that. These are the omega-3s, which is uh, a supplement that our body does make, but this is a addition. Uh, the EPA and DHA, uh, I will let you know that the EPA is cosapentanoic acid. And that doesn't the, even start with I me. know, exactly. It's <laughs> messed up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the DHA is docosa hexanoic acid. Okay. So in those combinations, uh, there has to be a certain milligram strength uh, so that it would be beneficial to you. Okay. That's one of the things that I think they've asked me to, to go with a specific brand because this is, mm, this is that one you the that, uh, that guarantees uh, a level. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can get it naturally, as we said, fish oils, and that's usually the cold water fishes. So it's like salmon, mackerel, tuna, anchovies. Uh, okay. There's uh, sardines. Fish. Yeah. Okay. So if you take, not everyone can eat that much fish or love fish. So this yeah. is where you will find that this will give you the levels that okay. you need. And the other cool stuff about this is it uh, doesn't leave you smelling like fish either. Yeah, there's some <laughs> brands that will have that. Uh, there is a bit, yeah. but, you know, you just... It, it, Feedback of uh, fish burps. So, yeah. That, you know, yeah, it's there a little some, bit less fish yeah. burpy than, yeah. than digging into the pickled herring, which I've never yeah. done before. <laughs> yeah, and there's some brands that will, you know, cause that, so... Yeah, just being okay. selecting them. If you were recommended this one, that's probably what the yeah, team it's, it's has pretty decided. straightforward yeah. for me because they've they've given me a specific product. Yeah. But I guess at that point, uh, you you pay more, you get what you pay for. Right? Yeah, and in your case, it's helping. <laughs> yeah, the cheap yeah. stuff you, you oh, yeah. jar with a dead fish in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can find that, <laughs> but that just helps uh, for decreasing cell inflammation. Okay. Um, it helps to decrease cholesterol as well too, and maybe uh, effects on cardiovascular disease as well too. Okay. Um, I would. Yeah, they had um, uh, when when they added this to my uh, my medications uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years in, and yeah. and uh, I was kind of asking about it, and they were saying, well, there is actually some research with mm -hmm. uh, that 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 led to you know they yeah. had some really good outcomes with. Right, yeah. You know, with, with heart patients. Exactly. Uh, again, we, omega 3s, they're found in different food sources as well, too. So, again, if you are needing more of it, yeah. you're better off taking it in a supplement. That was the other advice eat yeah. fish at least once a week. If, yeah, yeah. If you like fish at all, yeah, uh, the skin it's, it's of a the good fish thing. there. Yeah. So, yeah. that's where it has high sources of that. So, yeah. um, with taking supplements, sometimes people will find that it might bother their stomach as well, too. Okay. And I would always say to take it within the recommended dose, don't take more than what you're told, because mm -hmm. again, with the combination Just of warfarin... Just because it's over yeah. the counter and yeah. it's a nutritional supplement. Exactly. So you want to be careful. more is better, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you just don't want to uh, you know, put yourself at risk for any other complications. Yeah. So side effects, interactions, the stuff like one that. One that I can foresee because you're on the warfarin, again, if you were taking it the recommended dose, it would be fine. Yeah. But if you're taking it higher doses, that but this could, could cause like, increase the effect of the warfarin. Yeah, because okay. it, it itself it 
can promote uh, um, less clotting as well too. So, okay. yeah. So you want to? Well, of course, because you're oily inside. Yeah, <laughs> slippery. <laughs> it's so. oil for the pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, and another nu nutritional supplement, magnesium. Mm-hmm. Tell me about so magnesium. So magnesium has probably been in the spotlight in the last uh, few years. Uh, it has, again, our bodies will use it for cellular function as well. Um, I've seen people taking it if they have like cramps, uh, body cramping. Uh, it, in, in your case, it was a reason that you were given to do, you know why they told you to start taking the magnesium? Yeah, that was the thing. There wasn't a lot of explanation mm. at first. And uh, the other thing is there's so much going on. They're teaching you about the VAD and everything that sometimes mm. you miss that. Right. Um, I started asking the team later. And uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, that they had said was um, there's just not as much um, magnesium in natural sources of food as mm. there used to be because uh, modern food production methods have depleted the soil to some degree and, mm. you know, and foods that may have been considered magnesium rich mm. at one point, not so much now. Mm -hmm. okay. So they're just kind of sad. And I know they test for it. So. Yeah, they will test for uh, its and uh, therapeutic uh, levels as well too. So, I mean, they told me that um, that in uh, Europe and North America, there's some studies that had, uh, had said that 50% of people were magnesium deficient. Deficient, so. yeah. So again, again, I guess it's one of those, there's no real downside um, to doing. Yeah, I mean, again, with moderation is the key. Yeah. The one thing with magnesium is it can cause uh, GI upset as well too. Okay. Uh, it can cause looser stools. Uh, which can lead to uh, diarrhea. So it, kind of, it gives a laxative effect. Okay. Because you'll see some medications that are in uh, other combinations with magnesium in it. So if one causes constipation, the magnesium that's put in there might offset okay. that as well. So that's too. actually blended intentionally. Yeah. That way. For example, like calcium supplements. Sometimes okay. you'll see some combinations of calcium with the magnesium because it offsets. Okay. The side effect of constipation that calcium causes. Okay. Yeah. And that's another one that I've I've seen some patients on is is calcium. Mm -hmm. They don't have me on calcium. I guess mm -hmm. I'm getting enough from my diet. Yeah. But uh, yeah. That's that that's another one that that's another seems one. common in yeah. bad patients. Calcium carbonate is your best source of uh, calcium. Okay. Um, that particular uh, calcium can be a little harder on the stomach and can cause the constipation. So there's different types of calcium, like calcium citrate, and there's combination of calciums that are easier in the stomach, but then you would have to take more of a dose throughout the day and take it with food just to okay. offset the stomach irritation. And then you'll see the combinations, as I mentioned earlier, with the magnesium to offset the side effects. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So again, usually an over-the-counter thing. Um, they, uh, but um, reasonably safe. Yeah. And again, because you are subjected to blood work regular basis that your doctor orders, they'll probably order a panel of your electrolytes and and um, minerals just to see how you are. Okay. Yeah. So. Now the other yeah. one I was on for a while was was potassium, and right. that was when they had me on the Lasix. Mm -hmm. So the way I understand, you take the Lasix and you are probably supplementing potassium. Usually. And that one was actually, you know, it's a supplement, but it was a prescription. Mm -hmm. So I guess that was a pretty wicked pill. I don't do so that. One that you were and given. You don't mess around with the the, no. uh, the take on, on an empty stomach. Yeah, thing yeah, and that, that was prescription uh, dosing, so that you can't find over the counter. I mean, you can find some lower dose potassium, but that's not the same dose as what you were given. And that's what was required because you were probably on a higher dose of the furosemide, which is the Lasix as well. Yeah. So, and true, that can uh, be quite. Uh, hard on the stomach, so 
and you found out easily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. it, uh, I've, I've got a pretty tough stomach. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, empty stomach, whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, wish yeah. I hadn't done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you, you really don't want to mess with that, too. No. That, that could actually cause some, yeah. some severe... Yeah, and so you were probably, uh, the doctors would probably prescribe something else to help with your stomach to protect it even further as well. So. Yeah, and, and that's actually, that's exactly what happened. Oh, okay. they, um, when I was on the Lasix, I was on the potassium, and when I was on the potassium, I was on a tummy med. And that okay. was, um, uh, it was a P Proton, the PPI, proton yeah. pump inhibitor? Correct. And, um, and that was um, pentoprazole? So Am I that, getting that right? Yeah, pentoprazole. Pentoprazole. Is the generic name. Yeah, I spent a couple of years calling that pentoprazole, and I, yeah. I am wrong. Well, <laughs> <laughs> wrong we syllable. would understand it. <laughs> so the uh, pentoprazole comes in two formats pentoprazole sodium. Pentoprazole magnesium. So okay. the brand name is Pantaloc for the pentoprazole sodium and okay. Tecta for the pentoprazole magnesium. Yeah, and that was the one that that was that I was on. Mm -hmm. Being that uh, it's a small amount of the salt that's attached to the actual pentoprazole, if you are if you are on a sodium restricted diet, they may choose the magnesium. Yeah. Salt instead. Okay, that make that makes yeah. sense because so. I mean they always worry about that a little bit with heart patients. Yeah. So, so any okay. decrease that is makes helpful. Sense. So, so that um, basically protects the stomach, right? Right. So it helps so that your stomach isn't gonna uh, pump out more acids because okay. that can also be used for uh, indigestion or heartburn, higher levels of acid that causes a heartburn. Um, so it's other ones in that class. Uh, again, there's several in the same family okay. uh, that does the same thing. So basically, it does the decrease in acid your stomach makes. Okay. So some of the other ones that you uh, people might be familiar with is like lansoprazole, which is Prevacid, uh, omeprazole, which is Losec, uh, rebeprazole, Periot, and the newer one that is isomeprazole which is Nexium. So okay. that's like the pro drug to the low sec. So that means it just breaks down and then becomes omeprazole. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, that's great. Yeah. Um, side effects from Some from people those? find that it's gonna, they may have some GI upset, even though it's supposed to help the stomach, but it kind of causes a queasy. So normally it's taken a half an hour before breakfast, but if you can't tolerate it, then take it with food then. Uh, some people may notice they have the headache and diarrhea from that, but pretty much those are the main ones okay. people notice. Okay. Yeah. It was it was interesting because I I was taking a lot more meds back then because you start with the Lasix mm -hmm. and then you have to take the potassium and then you have to take the pentoprazole. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I was able to get down to the potassium sparing yeah. diuretic. I was able to discontinue all three of those pills. Yeah, and that just shows that one medication will help fix taking three yeah. medications. So that's always, you know, it's always trial and error, really, <laughs> at the beginning to make incredible sure. Incredible balancing. Yeah, act. it's balanced. <laughs> I have a whole new respect for yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, so we just have to make sure that's an ongoing discussion with your team to make sure the any okay. side effects. Okay. Oh, yeah, and there was. Um, Ferrous gluconate. It was an iron supplement that uh, that they were worried about a little bit about mm -hmm. stomach upset as well. Right. So that might have been another reason why they wanted you to be on the uh, uh, pentoprazole. Okay. Because that can help reduce any stomach upset as well. Um, you were put on the iron likely to help with. Uh, levels that were low. Yeah, yeah. I guess having a 9400 RPM blender uh, mm -hmm. bashing up your hemoglobin on a 24-hour basis isn't yeah. really good for it. Right. Um, yeah. So they, they they pretty much started me on on iron supplements. Mm -hmm. Do you um, don't remember which one you were on? Ferrous gluconate was the one. Okay. And uh, 
they had something that was, uh, was it polysaccharide iron? Right. That they had, had, had suggested it was, was way more expensive, but mm -hmm. they said it was a little bit easier on the stomach. What's yeah. the difference between those? Uh, so the polysaccharides are the latest uh, iron supplement that is easier on the stomach there. It has a higher elemental of iron as well, too. And okay. you only so have you actually absorb more as well. This Correct. Is, yeah. This is just like a complete win except for the price. Yeah, and you take it once daily as well, too. And now there is generics available, but it was brand name is Ferramax. Yeah. Uh, the generics aren't that, that much uh, lower still in price, expensive. yeah. <laughs> but the gluconate is uh, been around for some time, so there's many generics to that one under Ferris gluconate. Okay. But it offers. I remember it was uh, cheap, but yeah. It, yeah. Uh, it it's not that effective. And you and would have to take more doses of that one to okay. get your levels. And potentially up. hard on the tummy. Exactly, more okay. side effects. So this Ferris gluconate, which is uh, about 30 milligrams of elemental iron. There's ferrous sulfate, which is uh, a little bit more mid-range, and then there's ferrous fumarate, which is uh, 100. So again, those first three are more uh, harder on the stomach. So iron itself can cause constipation as well too. So you would have to increase your iron, or pardon me, your fiber intake. Uh, it can cause darkening of your stools as well too. So that's where you know, even with the Not polysaccharides. Not to be confused with a GI bleed. Um, yeah. I mean, that was the first thing when, when, when I started on iron supplements. Yeah. I, I take a look at this and go, my, my poo's the wrong color. Do I have a GI bleed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Going, no, so, no, that's, that's, that's the supplement doing exactly. that. Exactly. But keep watching. Exactly. So we Because it looks exactly like that. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Until Thanks you, a lot. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of factors you need to pay attention to. But again, it take it with food again we tell you to take it on an empty stomach because you have better absorption but not everyone can tolerate it so vitamin c can help increase the absorption of it as well too mm, so if you okay. take it with a glass of orange juice that helps okay but again it's uh, the side effects tend to make people not want to take their medications and again iron needs to be um it needs to be uh uh, the levels are drawn through your blood work again, too. So. Yeah, they watch us pretty closely yeah. on that. Um, our team does, seems to do an iron study about once a year, and that's okay. that's a special blood work that's separate from all the other stuff we yeah. do. And, yeah. you know, and I think they make the determination at that point whether... Uh, whether you're on a supplement or not, because yeah. uh, you know they've they've asked me the last couple of years not to, so I guess I'm I'm picking it up, yeah. uh, picking up enough from my diet. Exactly, and I mean One good sources in your diet would be red meats. Red meats, yeah, okay. red meats, organ meats. Uh, okay. We do find it in the green leafy vegetables as well too. So again, like Popeye. Have yeah, a lot yeah, of iron. spinach, beet tops, yeah. all the things that crush the crush the INR. And yeah, exactly. So that's where you have to be as well, right? watching yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So again, it's all in moderation and within levels based on your your uh, lab blood work. So. so the other one that I was on was uh, sertraline okay. and uh, um, Zoloft, and that was an antidepressant, which seemed like an odd heart medication to me. Mm -hmm. um, what were they doing there? Well, I, 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 I thought I was happy. Yeah, well, sometimes. I told them I was happy. <laughs> they didn't trust you, right? <laughs> yeah, they did not believe that I was happy. <laughs> I think uh, the fact is that when people undergo a big life um, event that you had gone through and many heart patients, look and their mood may be decreased so they may find themselves not thinking they're depressed but again it's something that the doctors might have to assess and say okay let's you know start you on this as well too to see how and i kind of think they, ju they just don't want to take the chance yeah because yeah uh, so. One of the things that I had heard was that there were some very bad outcomes associated with depression and mm -hmm. heart patients. Yeah. You know, to the point where they kind of want to start you on this stuff, whether even if they're not sure, mm. because it's safer than taking the chance of a deep depression and right. then trying to, the, you know, to fix that figure when out it's what gone to do that with much that. further. Yeah. So, yeah. So, again, it's a matter of, you know, what you're 
what they've seen in practice and what seems yeah. to be the standard there. I figured I was was the reasonably happy guy, and mm -hmm. I I started talking with them after a while about seeing if we could discontinue that mm -hmm. med, and. Um, I think I managed to convince them I was happy enough, mm -hmm. but uh, they had uh, actually mentioned that they were using it also as an antiplatelet. Is that a that must be a side effect? I, that's probably the off-label use again with that okay. particular one. So that in your because case, it was beneficial. They, they really wanted to work on my platelets, and mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. the aspirin I had was. Uh, was was only one tool in there, so mm -hmm. they said, "Well, okay, we can we can look at doing this for you yeah. because we're we're starting to believe that you are probably happy." Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, we have to do a, a platelet study and, and right. make sure that it's it's safe to do that exactly. as well. Exactly. So that's why they delved deeper into you know what options you had and if you were within the therapeutic levels. So that's yeah. where that. And then and even at that point, they yeah. ended up slowly weaning me off it. Mm -hmm. I guess you can't just go cold turkey on Correct, uh, because it acts on our central nervous circulating. system, okay. so you don't want to just start it and then be on it at a certain level. What would level. that do? Well, you might, if you stopped it right away, you would probably have like flu-like symptoms, uh, upset stomach, and kind of similar to the same side effects you may have experienced when you first started it. So again, okay. that... Uh, you would know, and some people become more irritable as well too, yeah. so it's your body slowly coming off of the medication, clearing okay. it out, so. The only yeah. problem I really had with it was it, it gave me incredible dry mouth. That's one of the and side that was, effects, that was making yeah. me sad. Yeah, I was, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I'd wake up with this horrible dry mouth and I'd, I'd actually lose sleep, and I was mm. kind of going, I, mean, I think this crap's actually making me sadder. Making so. sadder, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't want that. <laughs> So that's a that's a thing that can be a thing. That can be a side effect. Um, the main common ones people have is like nausea again. Okay. Uh, so we say take it with food. Uh, it can cause sleepiness as well too. So, okay. but on the same um, breath, it can actually cause people to have um, insomnia as well. So I guess it depends on you and how you know, the effects work on you there. Okay. Yeah. And what drug family is that? That is what we call SSRI. Okay. So it is the serotonin, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Again, so again I just yeah. I, I want to know, I want to know how that works yeah. sometimes. Again, it's chemicals in our body, yeah. or in our brain, that uh, if you inhibit uh, this pathway that we normally have, then the serotonin which is needed is now increased. So okay. then you feel happier. That's, that makes you <laughs> Mood happy. elevating, yeah. <laughs> For lack okay. of a better way of okay. describing it, yeah. And there's other classes as well too of okay. antidepressants. So okay. uh, in what kind of things might we run into in that? Oh well that in the like? SSRIs there's the the uh, S citalopram which is Ciprolex, uh, citalopram which is Celexa, uh, paroxetine which is Paxil. Uh, that's one type, and then there's other ones called SNRI, which is serotonin norepinephrine reuptake. So norepinephrine is another chemical that our brain has, again, that acts to help us okay. elevate, so, and depression. And okay. then there's other ones as well, too. Again, that's another topic that is, can have an episode on itself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think we I think we might have to do this. Yeah. Um, for other drug groups, I guess the only other thing that that comes to mind for VAD patients is uh, some of us are on antibiotics. Um, right. So the, we have the drive line, uh, which is a huge infection risk. Right. Uh, I'm I've been very lucky with avoiding drive line infections. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody's that lucky, and. Right. Uh, There'll be patients that are managing a driveline infection or mm -hmm. trying to get rid of it. They'll mm -hmm. be taking antibiotics. Some, I understand, may be taking it as a preventative measure. Right. Uh, the one thing that I've ran into is uh, now when I go to the dentist, they want me to take medi uh, or antibiotics before uh, before I go to the dentist. I'll right. take a single giant dose of mm -hmm. amoxicillin. Right. So that would be pre-dosing before any procedure is done in your mouth. Uh, because our mouth has a, a host of bacteria that if there are any dental work, even this uh, dental cleaning, you know, if you accidentally cut your gums, then infection can 
travel through the bloodstream, which goes through your heart. So you want to prevent what we call endocarditis and okay. infection. Yeah. So the same bacteria that's in your mouth can actually travel. harm the heart. Exactly. Okay. Your immune system is uh, a, a regular person will have enough of an immune system to fight off that bacteria. But then again, it's more of the at risk. So you want to be prevention. Okay. Because I, I, I know I've heard dentists talk about that. You know, mm -hmm. it's good gum health is often exactly. you know, a path to good heart health. Exactly. Uh, so it, I and guess even if a you have less person. heart left that works like yeah. like I do, you yeah they just they're they're just more careful than with yeah. the. Okay. Yeah, you just have to be mindful of good dental health to begin with, because again, it can lead to uh, through the bloodstream and, and then it goes through the heart, and so we just have to be careful. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we'll definitely have to see if we can get together again yeah. and, and get a little bit deeper into some of yeah, these, because can... again, you know, the, the the family names of these these meds just they just beg questions right but yeah. I think that covers most of what right. I'm on yeah I want to thank you very much Sandy for You're coming welcome. on the show and and explaining this stuff I've learned a few things here mm -hmm. um, I've learned a few things in our discussions before this just yeah. uh, just chatting about about doing this show yeah. and I mean, uh, I mean I'm, I'm five years in here and yeah there's, and there's still stuff to know yeah so. and you seem to uh, you know, when you first had all these medications, it's overwhelming. So it tends to be uh, the more you learn about your medications, the, the better it is for yourself. So you it is. Watch there's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. And, and actually, that, that's a good time to maybe mention yeah. this thing. Um, okay. So show? this is a dose set. Yeah. So that means it organizes this the medication. This is the thing that keeps Larry from poisoning himself. <laughs> So, yeah, in this case, uh, Larry's uh, dosette is so that you can remove these individual days. It's a daily dose of medication that's morning, noon, evening, and bedtime. So it's a seven-day dosette because there's seven compartments. And this is uh, beneficial, especially if you are on a lot of medications it helps to organize it so that uh, you don't forget to take your medication. And if you do, you can act on it as soon as you remember. Or if you are on, you had mentioned to me in private about your warfarin dosing being altered every other yeah. day is a different dosing. Yeah, that's the, I, I would completely mess that up. Mm -hmm. I, I alternate 11 and 12 milligrams. Right. So, um, you know, it's very easy when I lay this out a week ahead. Yeah. You know, I can go, you know, it, there's there's two fives and, and a one, two mm -hmm. fives and a two, two fives and a one. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's no way I'd be able to keep track yeah. of what I was doing. It's hard enough to try and take a couple of medications on a daily basis, but when you have to alternate it, it becomes a little bit more complicated. So okay. it, this is just one more tool to help. And so there's also yeah. blister packs that uh, patients can have as well, too. Uh, so they kind of do this all for you as yeah. long as your meds don't change too Right. Much. And some people are capable doing their own dose sets. And in Larry's case, because he's on alternating warfarin, it's easier to uh, maintain that. So, but okay. yeah. yeah. So that is a helpful tool. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, thanks, Sandy. Thanks for You're coming welcome. on the show. You're welcome. And uh, we'll get together soon and... Sure. Uh, Talk some more science here. I'd, I'd, I'd love Dig to deep know how into some, more. Of, some yeah. of these things work. Yeah, it's a, it's a show in itself. <laughs> <laughs> so. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Okay, take care. You got it? Yep. Yellow death. Don't pour it on anything you don't want to kill. Thanks, man. It's just something I'm good at.